You do not do, you do not do any more black shoe in which I have lived like a foot for 30 years, poor and white, barely daring to breathe or a chew. These are the first five lines of Sylvia Plath's poem, Daddy. And I discovered this poem in high school on accident. Um, and even though I didn't really understand what was literally going on in the poem, the sound of each word, how they stacked and shifted and built, amazed me. So looking back, I see this as a real beginning for me as a writer, because literature didn't have to just be about narrative and plot and characters, even though I loved those things. It could also just be about how the words sounded and how it felt for me as a reader to read them. Um, reading Daddy, I fell in love with poetry. The second time the power of Plath's words completely changed the way I read happened a couple of years after that. I was 20 years old and I'd been doing my Plath research for about two years. Um, and I'd read everything pretty much that she'd ever written. I'd read all of her poetry, but I'd also read her novel, The Bell Jar. And I'd really connected with the story of a girl who is an overachiever and who puts her worth in her accomplishments and who really wants to be important. But this story is also about intense depression and a mental breakdown. And even though I could sympathize with those things from a distance, I didn't understand them. The bell jar takes its title from an extended metaphor. Blas says that depression is like a bell jar over your head and the more sad or blue or anxious you get, the lower it gets. And eventually it'll come all the way down and trap you in your own misery and sever you from the world. When I was 20 years old and I experienced my own sense of disconnection from myself and numbness for the first time, I wrote in my journal, I feel like there's a safe, neat globe around my skin. It's clear so I can think about the sorts of emotional reactions I would normally be having. Even though I'd read the bell jar many, many times, I wasn't thinking about Plath's metaphor when I wrote in my journal about my own numbness. This journal entry was really a transition for me from merely sympathizing with Plath's words to understanding them through my own trauma and experience. I could no longer keep that safe distance between me and Plath's words because a few weeks before this journal entry, I had been raped in my bedroom and I was raped by a stranger between 2 and 4 a.m. on Valentine's Day and I was a sophomore in college. So because of my rape, the bell jar changed. Nothing physically about the bell jar had changed, but my body had changed and that trauma on my body changed the way I read her words. Because under my bell jar, I didn't know who I was anymore. I was broken and I was really wounded. And I was really grateful for the text that understood what it felt like for me to be wounded. Plath's words helped me navigate my own pain and I realized that that's why I'd fallen in love with her in the first place and what I wanted to do for other people because Plath helped me feel understood. I believe that if we're willing to approach art like Plath's, art that is really difficult and open and honest, we can do something deeper than just sympathize with another person's pain. We can choose to sit intimately with that experience and we can experience all of the emotions that make us human. Even if we haven't had that experience ourselves or even if that experience is painful. Khalil Gibran said that all art comes out of a bleeding wound or a smiling mouth. And I think the same is true of all poetry. So that's what I want to make. That's what I want to put into the world. Words that are vulnerable and as true as I know how to make them, but words that also resonate beautifully with people and carry the potential to be understood by other people's joy and pain long after I've written them. I think Plath and the other writers I admire have helped me begin to do this. So I'd like to end on part of a poem of mine titled Should. But I curled up, buried the alcohol, college and summer or winter, the bedroom cut like white teeth, like pictures of before. The two touches I remember, the world loved me twice, once to hold, once to punch beneath the wings of ribs. Thank you. <laughs>